Hi folks, welcome. 30th of December. I'm in the middle of making some bud vases. Let's grab that tripod. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas everybody. And um, yeah, I'm just back here in the studio. Um, we'll start like that. Yep, got my sideways light there. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I hope you had a great Christmas and that you will have a wonderful new year, 2020. Yeah, these are sort of regular, my regular type of bud vase. They are the eight ounces and they're sort of loosely, well, not exactly loosely thrown. But they're not all kind of, they're not thrown to a gauge. I'm not trying to get, well, I am trying to get them sort of roughly looking the same, but there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of natural, there is a bit of natural variation in them. Yep. Yes, it's rather warm weather we're having at the minute. It's not particularly cold at all. So we have a nice toasty 70 degrees in here right now because that fire is easily keeping us warm. So these are not actually particularly easy to throw. I don't think. You have to sort of throw a few of them to kind of get into the get get into the way of them, so to speak. Because there's a few little a few little tricks, I suppose. As they're all there is with all pots, aren't there? There's little tricks. Tricks of the trade, so to speak, you know, to to get get the clay and shape it. So rather narrow necked, a bud vase, what's a bud vase for? Well, for a bud, all right bud. <laughs> a bud vase is for just one or two flowers, just a few small flowers. Basically, a bud vase is really not a vase to go over there somewhere on a mantelpiece, but it's to, it's to be close to you on the table in front of you so therefore it doesn't want to be too big it doesn't want to be too obtrusive on the table just cutting a little bit off of that because one of the things you find when throwing these bud vases is that because you are constricting in the neck so the clay is having to compress over itself and the result of that is that it can sort of bunch up on itself you know it doesn't it doesn't perfectly compress so then you, you're going to need then you get a wavy a, a wavy a wavy top um, another characteristic of these particular bud vases that I do, they are reasonably narrow in the foot, which gives them a little, a nice little bit of elegance. But they're a little bit fat in the belly here. 
There he is. Put him down. Right, what I propose to do is just bring that camera down a bit. Let's see. I've got this, this light is a new addition. And let's see if we can just drop the camera so you get a bit more of the sideways. Whoop. Not quite as much as that maybe. Uh, something like that. Let's get rid of that coffee mug. <laughs> it's empty. It needs filling. <laughs> it needs filling. Right, let's let's bring this in now a little bit. Zoom it in. So you see some detail. We like the details, Simon. Yes, we have to have the details. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll do my best. Let's talk through bud vases as we do them. Grab your eight ounces of clay, get on the wheel. Let's do it. So, let's get the clay, get the, get the clay lump. Now it does help, well, with all pots it helps, have the, have the clay well wedged, well kneaded. It particularly helps though with bud vases because they're narrow in the neck. And because of that constriction movement that we're going to have to do to bring in that neck, if you've got clay that is not very well wedged, um, the clay may, may bunch up on itself, as I described a moment ago. And you'll soon feel, like this one here, I can feel it's got a little bit of a... I think it's got an air bubble. Would you believe it? Having said that... Oh, Simon, I thought you said it had to be well wedged. <laughs> well, that's good. It's all good teaching material, you see, isn't it? When it goes wrong for me, it's actually better for you. <laughs> All right, so let's start off. Let's get down there. Let's pull up, just pull up some clay like that. All right, sort of cylindrical to start with. Good first move. All right, next. Now we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to, as we pull, we're going to widen the belly there, you see? And now, right after the belly, we're coming right in again, hard. Okay, so you widen and then you come in. You will know what I mean if you try if you try to do this. You'll you'll see there a little bit. Okay, there's the wide, and now we're coming in to try to get that narrow neck. Now I can feel there's a little. Sometimes you know when you have an air bubble and you prick it, you get rid of it but it, it leaves a scar there in the clay. Do you know what I'm talking about? So now, this is important to learn, okay? Six points of contact, I call it. It's six, you're contacting the clay in six places, okay? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, it's a constriction move. So now we're going to, this is where the clay will, oh, don't forget to, don't forget to, you need a sponge stick, get down there. This is where it's better not to have a sponge that's too wide, as some of them are, because you can't you can't get into you can't get into smaller pieces. Okay. Alright, so there you see, I've narrowed it. Now it's exactly as I told you. You see what's happened to the top. You see that irregularity? Alright, so let's just get down here into the belly. Let's just get this as we want it. God, this is like a really rough looking one, isn't it? That's all right. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that off there, like that. That's where you need a nice little cut off needle that's nice and fine. Okay, you start trying to cut these off with great 
poor syringe needles, you're going to be wrecking the top of your pot. That's why you need a nice fine needle. Okay, I'm checking in my mirror over there. Get yourself a mirror, please, if you haven't got a mirror yet. You, you need to get one because it's going to really make life a lot easier for you. Alright, so there's the basic shape, but now we're going to take the, tr the trim, tr sorry, throwing stick with the angle here. And we're going to get in underneath. This is why you need a good throwing stick to get in underneath there to you see that gives gives the form some elegance. Okay, now using just the side of my throwing stick, sort of as a rib, I just go over it like that. You see all that there? That was all, that was all on the pot, I've taken it off, okay? Put your stuff back in your water pot. All the bits off your hands and all the little bits off, get, it, get into the habit of putting it back into the water pot. All right. Okay, so I'm just finalizing this. Yep. You really do need the, the mirror because it helps you it helps you get the, the right profile, you see. Let's just quickly whip this off, have a quick peek at him. So there he is. All right, I'm going to do another. Let's just whip him off. Okay, so just clean hands. Okay, as I said, on, onto the water pot, onto the side of the water pot, and now take your cutoff wire, clean it, hold it with your thumbs down slowly, with the wheel going slowly, just cut through like that. Now with your clean fingers you can lift that off without stopping the wheel. You see what I mean? And what could be easier, he said. All right, let's do another. Let's do another, brother. Right. So you need a fair turn, a fair little turn of speed because we are making the pot close to the center of the wheel, okay? So you, the, the closer that you are, your pot that you're making is to the center of the wheel, I'm talking in, in di diameter, the faster you should go, really. At least that's what I think. Okay. Okay, there's your nice centered mushroom, your button mushroom. Now, people write to me and they say, Oh, Simon, I wish you could see your fingers and your hands and all the rest of it. Oh, I wish I could show them to you as well, but you know. Not always possible. We'll do our best anyway. Look, there it is. See, I'm in the process. You see how he, the vase is, is taking shape. Now, up here, fill the belly there. And now, as soon as you reach the, the point of the widest, you want to come in. six points of contact, constrict the neck in, you see, there he is, and now when you constrict in, in a neck, the clay thickens, you get extra clay there, right, so you've got to thin that, just thin it out a little bit. Now, if the top is very wavy, then I like to trim it, uh, cut it with the with the needle tool. I like to get it back to not being too wavy. 
if it's only a very little bit wavy, just a little bit, you know, then I don't worry about it. Don't be a perfectionist. In other words, I'm not a perfectionist. But I know some people are. And it's just got to be just so, you know, just, just so. Well, just relax a little bit. Don't be so perfectionistic. Remember, there is beauty in irregularity. What blade of grass that God created out there is equal one to another? They're all different. We're all different. Why are we all then trying to make pots exactly the same, each one? We're not machines. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, hmm, I'm thinking it could go in a little bit there, you see? Uh. Just like that, just like that. There's the little things that a pot speaks to you, it talks to you, see? It tells you. And if you feel when, when you're looking at something that it's, it, it just needs something, then try to see what it is that it needs and do that. It can make all the difference. It's like, it's like a, a musical instrument that's out of tune. It cries out to be, put me in tune. You know, and if you if you can if you've got ears to hear, then you will be able to do that. It's a bit the same with a pot. Shapes shapes of pots are like musical instruments. They 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 speak to you. So get your pot visually in tune. Because there's a lot of pots. A lot of shapes of pots that people make are rather out of tune, quite frankly. They don't sing. <laughs> Our pots have got to sing. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. So pulling up the clay, widening it now as I pull to the belly, and now coming in. This one's got a little bit of a, a variation there in the top lip. It's all right, don't panic if you see that, don't panic. Just carry on. Just pull it up a bit. All right, now you're gonna take your needle. Insert your needle. There it is. And now, Gonna look better. Dee, 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 dee. Yes, if you're interested in workshops, there's workshop dates up there. Uh, go there, check them out. So when you put your tool in at the bottom here, don't whack it in there. Alright, just put it in a little bit gradually to start with. Otherwise you'll knock the pot for six. You'll knock it. No, you don't know what that means, you Americans, you knock it for six. Some of you will know what I mean. That's an English term, cricketing term, when you knock the ball for six. It means that you're just gonna 
you're going to whack it too hard in other words and it's going to go well in cricket six is good but it's not it's not good anywhere else if you know what I mean and you knock something for six okay just using my throwing stick here just to crisp up the form oh I didn't take out the water Oh, now I've got a problem. What am I going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this sponge and I'm going to twist it like that so it's got no... All right, and then I'm going to go... There it is. We did it. Right, lever. Okie dokie, right. Slow down, straight through. Clean hands and see how easy it comes off. Okay, folks, that's it. That is it. That was fun. Oh, I still got a few more lumps to make. A few more. Yeah, there they are. Look. So they're all. Let's just take the camera down. They're all different. There's going to be a little bit of variation. They're not wildly different, though, are they? They're not wildly different. If you look, you'd probably think, oh, well, they look all the same, Simon. I know, <laughs> but they're not. They are most certainly not exact identical, but they're, they're all, well, they're all the same weight, so. Yes. Okay, folks, that's it for today, right now. I've got four more lumps, four more to make. I just made also, before that, before these, I just made a few ladies mugs here, these guys. We'll wait for them to stiffen off a bit and then we'll put some handles on those. They're still too wet at the minute. And I've got to get through a firing very quickly in a few days, a couple of days. Okay. Thank you for your participation, interest, joining me here for as long as you stayed. <laughs> um, yes, workshops 2020, go to my website if you want tools. Probably what I'm going to be doing is do, going to do, I'm going to do a sale on tools, a sale on tools for the month of January. So that will be, um, you know, my, all my regular tools, throwing sticks, cut off needles, sponge sticks, trim tools, etc. I'm going to probably going to be doing like 10% off. If that interests people, it's just to encourage people to go there, maybe buy at a quieter time of the year as it is in, in January after Christmas. Yep. Okay, look out for that. Meanwhile, keep practicing and I will see you around town. Bye for now. Did, did, did.